Welcome to the Swolecast here on RudderGrinders.com. It's going to be a fun show. We've got a uh, special guest, Lord Reeves, on the show, and maybe Pete. I, there, there he is. There is Pete on today's show. So Pete is joining today's show. He's on with us. It's going to be fun. Stick around. It's a Swolecast on RudderGrinders.com. <laughs> Yep, that's me. All right, just want you guys to know I'm total dust. I'm the problem. Hear ye, hear ye. Leave it to the guy with the crypto dunes, Abby, to not understand content. <laughs> I should have known you getting 30 likes was directly written by someone else. <laughs> you know me. I don't do a, a ton of research before the show. I put no research into this. Don't know if it's true at all. You're on the right show. To it, bro. <laughs> live a little. Live a little. Just live a little, guys. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Uh, we've got an exciting show. As you know, this is the bi weekly uh, Swolecast or bi monthly. Bi monthly Swolecast. No, I think it's bi weekly. Two times per month, every other week. So, um, and so we have a lot to talk about since two weeks ago. Davis, how's it going? It's going great, man. We are we are about to the NFL draft. We we've mm-hmm. reached the stage where JJ McCarthy is now, you know, he's going he's going number two overall. I, I think we're about seventy two hours away from some NFL insider saying actually the Chicago Bears are are thinking about not taking Caleb Williams and instead opting into the JJ McCarthy experience. Yeah, seeing Drake May outside the top ten is is something. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Pete, how's it going for you? You got everything set up? You, I mean, thanks for joining yeah. us. I guess I was like, we this is just bullshit, Dave. I mean, we what? start this show three minutes late every week. I'm like literally no. fifteen oh. seconds late. In the one time you have an early hard out, you're gonna fire nope. up the show before I get here. Listen, I, I, I mean, you are getting rather big, but you're you're not bigger than the show. Shut up, Pete. Shut uh, up. I'm I am the only one who puts any effort into the show. I spend that legit is... time. No, listen to this kitchen. I spend legitimate time on Wednesday yeah. mornings writing the Oversets yeah. overview. I'm the only yeah. one who does any pre-prep for this show. That's a fact. Part of my prep is not doing prep. That's <laughs> yeah, how okay. I prep for the show. <laughs> um, Davis, I do want to know. Like you've got the North Face jacket on with the T-shirt, but yet I see clips of you also with like a suit on for your sports grid uh, stuff. Do you do like costume changes based on the vibes of the show? Well, I mean, I have to uh, for for a lot of our programming on Sports Grid, they like us to wear a sports jacket, which is right over there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when I'm not on TV, I'm not just wearing a sports jacket around the house, so I, I change out of it immediately. The North Face jacket, I love it. It's right. it's it's cold in my in laws' basement right now. It's but it's about sixty degrees, so I I got the North oh, Face. Okay, on. I didn't know you were in in laws' basement. That that would make sense. The background is a little better. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, I want to welcome in special guest Rich Rebar, Lord Reeves, uh, friend of the show, just a pioneer in the uh, fantasy space. Reeves, how's it going, buddy? Listen, guys, it's always good when I get that invite, you know, to come on the Soulcast. I wish I had a bit planned, like uh, I did, you know, the last two times I was on. But uh, no, yeah. this is a no bit, uh, no bit for me. Uh, I've been, I've been slacking this off season. It's been nice, uh, just been kind of chilling. But you know, next week we have like like team needs, and then it, it's April, like NFL draft month. So like I'm, I'm like back on the clock and like doing stuff like full time. So yeah, it is what it is. We'll, how we'll many, how it. many big, how many big board drafts have you done? uh none man i haven't done any yet yes yes it's just, it just means you're a regular person not one of these guys who feel like they have to fill their spare every spare moment in march or february january with uh with drafts so reeves you're on on team has a life uh am i, I right? also made it a point this offseason that i was gonna do less this like post super bowl than i had done any other year yeah, uh, and I I fulfilled that. <laughs> yeah, a- AJT wants to know if you are a part of the uh, the Soccer Dave tree. You were one of the uh, the building blocks. Uh, you were one of. <coughs> well, Dave, uh, you're missing. You're, 
you are you are missing a key way to add Rich to the tree, which, which I am honestly stunned you have not done, which is that Reeves's first appearance on a podcast was on the Sports Wonderkin podcast probably about 13 years ago, honestly, um, at, uh, at this point. And you obviously, I, I mean, I don't know if you're still claiming me on your tree these days, but if you are, Reeves yeah. would be a branch off there. Yeah. And, Listen, and I, I do cut the grass in the Fantasy Insiders gear, though. I do have Fantasy Insiders Correct. gear. <laughs> See? We had we had uh, we had that crew. We had Sean. We had Reeves. Um, had uh, a couple of the action guys. The Graybon. Like we. This was this was way before FF Comedy Hour underscore Pete was even a thing. Um, and now now look at us. Pete's the one who's just just grinding it out. Um, yeah, I used to do an article for insiders where we used to talk about like the, the key injuries and how it would impact yeah. DFS. And I remember writing up a game where Riley Cooper had like two touchdowns. It was like, it was, um, like, it was like pre like super racist Riley Cooper. Well, he was still probably super, <laughs> he was super racist. still probably at that moment. It just wasn't exposed yet. But uh, I remember just Riley Cooper being like the dude that like hit yeah. was like kind of like the linchpin of like, this is why we do this article to be on top of Riley Cooper touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> uh, based there in Cleveland. So we'll get your take uh, in a second, just on this Browns team and this offense that uh, seems like it's poised to take off this season. But before we do that, we want to do uh, what, you know, users or viewers usually come to the show for, and that is Mr. Overzet's overview. He's got that dog in him. What? He's got that dog in him. What? Overzet's overview. Come on. All right. Uh, welcome to the Swole Cast, the show that was recently described as not a real show. Yeah. Um, the issue <laughs> by who? This, Davis, just let me do my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> the issue with this review, though, is it was not uttered by a random commenter, but by one of the longest standing cast members, Mr. Davis Maddock. See, Davis, if you're just patient, we can get to that information. Best day uh, of my life. Maddock is now claiming he doesn't have to own up to anything he says on this show, so you guys can do with that what you will. And for me, this is now the third straight day in a row for me doing a show with Davis, and my patience is wearing thin. <laughs> but I keep hearing from everyone how important it is to spend time with your kids when they're young. And, uh, <laughs> we'll just never get this time back. So I am enjoying it. Uh, that should actually be the, the motto for this show. Uh, watch the Swolecast uh, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. You'll never get that time back. Uh, I think. <laughs> Put that on a shirt. Uh, we roped poor Lord Reeves into doing the show today. Uh, a last gasp effort on our part to keep the veneer of a real show uh, <laughs> intact while its edifice is destroyed by a mole from the inside. Uh, Reeves, happy to have you here today. Uh, it's nice to have someone else here who can tell Davis that Malachi Corley isn't happening or tell David Kitchen that no matter how many players the Titans add this offseason, it doesn't change the fact that Will Levis is their quarterback. So a voice of reason here oh. today. I have no idea what we're going to talk about for the next, uh, what is it now, 35 minutes? 30, because Kitchen, 36 minutes, yeah. 36 minutes. Kitchen has a real early heart out today. Uh, maybe 35 minutes on the hip drop tackle. <laughs> I think that's what this audience would like. Which, by the way, guys, the pussification of the NFL, it just <laughs> won't stop. <laughs> I mean, I long for the days where playing fantasy football <laughs> felt dangerous, you know? Uh, anyways, I'll leave the show topics up to our host, yep. David Kitchen, who I know yep. will keep us on track, focused, yeah. sharp, hitting our marks regardless of what we discuss. Back to you, Dave. Yeah, thank you, Pete. Thank you. Yeah, um, you know, you, you mentioned it. Twitter or X just went ablaze yesterday, or two days ago, with the hip drop tackle, and then yesterday morning, the kickoff rule. And I, I mean, people just going nuts. NFL is going to be flag football before we know it. Yada, yada, yada. I mean, without even really reading what is going to happen, Pete, I do want to get your thoughts first as a former XFL thought leader, the new kickoff rule 
is coming straight from the XFL. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, it would, uh, it would seem weird to have a a non pro take on this. Uh, We are going to reduce injuries. We're going to keep the excitement of kickoffs. Uh, It was already piloted. Like you said, in the XFL worked out really well. People liked it. Um, Seems like a win-win Dave. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Like any reason not to like this Reeves? It's just the old ball knower thing to ruining my game, right? Like the, the same thing it's with the horse seven tractor. NFL. Like, yeah, I mean, it, the NFL is coming off a year where they had the the highest touchback rate in the in league history. They're just trying to make some. And the league is desperate for some offense, right? Like we are in a current defensive meta. I just did a show at Davis and been talking about it. Like we are, like the league is trying to get some points scored. These last two years have sucked for the offense. They're just trying to find a way to get some offense and making teams go seventy five yards. It's the way yeah it's good davis are you excited about this i mean i i really like it because it is going to allow old friend quarter l patterson the opportunity to <laughs> extend his lead not just old friend old friend if you don't know the quarter l patterson lore you should have watched the show 11 years ago who yeah, likes who like cpap more davis or arthur smith i mean that's, that's <laughs> the debate I mean, the first time that Cordero Patterson gets a goal line carry over Jalen Warren, fantasy Twitter is going to stop thinking that the CPAT stuff is so cute and funny, and they're gonna they're gonna turn on I, him real fast. I thought he was. Aren't, aren't you friend. aren't you Eskimo brothers? With yeah, I thought you were more than a friend. Yeah, that was the that that uh, was the indeed the lore. Yeah, who yeah. was first, right. you or him? <laughs> Honestly, it's been so long I kind of forget. Yeah. It's I mean we're, we're talking we're talking I was 18 years old. I'm 31 year old man with a mustache now. So also gonna, what? Congratulations, 18 year old Davis. There, I I should have set this joke up in this in the uh Overzets overview, but the common denominator between Arthur Smith's relationship with Cordero Patterson and the rest of the the players on his teams and Davis's relationship with him is cucking. Like that is what Cord- <laughs> <laughs> Dan Bach is not going to be happy with this show. We are we are no. getting we are getting demonetized right now. It's How? Not a real show, bro. It's Say not whatever a... I want. Yeah, Davis, are you okay with not a real show meaning not a real paycheck? Is what uh, is what my question is. You know, uh, I will have to bring that up with Better Collective's HR department to see yeah. if I can be punished for something said on a non-company stream. So we'll we'll see. Yeah. It's publicly available. Um, Yeah, we got lots to talk about. Um, Davis, your thoughts on Sneed jumping ship and going. Okay, all right, good. So we're starting with a a (laughs) 27-year-old cornerback with a bum knee getting traded for a third-round pick over, like, I mean, we had LSU's Pro Day. We had Matt Harmon. We'll get to that in a second. I just want to know your thoughts real quick on Sneed jumping ship and going to the um the opportunity that Tennessee provides them so my thoughts would be that every time Veach has done this he's looked correct yeah uh, I can't think of can't think of one time he did this where he was wrong actually the mistakes that Veach have made have actually been the other way acquiring guys that were coming on to second contract time which has been real mistakes um on on his yeah. part and to me it indicates that the organization, is actually simpatico with all of us, which is we don't want to watch another year of Pat Mahomes being glorified, Ryan Tannehill, of, of you know, the Chiefs scoring 21 and a half points per game. We, we would like to get back to score. It, it, crazy stat. In the first Chiefs Super Bowl season, so 2019, 2020, they averaged a full touchdown more per game than Mahomes' most recent Super Bowl season, 21 and a half points per game to 28 and a half points per game. I, I think organizationally they prefer the balance to be the other way so yeah. if that means not paying sneed his money that means not paying sneed his money davis famous for saying on this show that the chiefs would never draft hollywood brown or uh have hollywood brown <laughs> okay if we if we really want to do this we really want to roll back nope. tape what i said i don't i don't want to do this they... i want to i want to move on reeves um <laughs> your thoughts on this Titans I'm cool. defense Listen, going I, forward. I'm, I'm cool with the Titans uh, in general as an offense, just to how different everything's going to be. Now, granted, Will Levis is still their quarterback, and the you know, the I will not stand for all this Levis slander. It what? is 
if you are going to go into bed with Will Levis and see what you know he yes. has, like why not do this? Because here's the thing: it's the it's not just that they added you know Calvin Ridley and you know added Tony Pollard. It's the loss of you know Vrabel, Derrick Henry, adding Brian Callahan. It's it's a it's going to be totally different. Like this is a team that lived in fit playing you know two wide receiver sets, facing eight man boxes, and they're going to live in eleven personnel now. Uh, they're gonna spread the field like this is a good Madden roster. Like if you're if you're if you're picking the yes, Titans in Madden, that's exactly what it is. Like this is good. Like you got speed everywhere. You're gonna open the field up. Now they don't have an offensive line. They have a quarterback that that is very erratic. So we'll see how this comes together. But the you, quarterback be, play is because fun. of the offensive line play. <laughs> Fair they're... enough. We'll 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 keep blaming that on Kentucky. We'll blame that on Tennessee. We'll blame it yeah. every stop. We'll Levens has had. Just wait. But... <laughs> Let him cook. <laughs> Let him cook. Callahan said at the coaches meetings that Ridley was going to be basically Jamar Chase. Um, I want he to did know... say that. That is yes. true. That was <laughs> those did. words words that were said. And people drafted him last year like he was going to be Jamar <laughs> Chase. And how did that work out? Some of us, yeah. some of us saw the difference between him and Zay Jones running routes and couldn't keep it in their pants. Some yeah. of us. But it's okay. fun. Um, I think on paper yeah. it's fun though. Like you know, you've got Hopkins who still wasn't dead last year. Uh, you know, Ridley was still a guy that was constantly open. Uh, which is interesting. Like the whole dichotomy around Trevor Lawrence and what's going on is is interesting because like there's a there seems to be polarizing views if is Trevor Lawrence even good now. Uh, yeah, th- that's going on now. And the Jaguars probably missed their window. He's gonna have to get extended. Like the Jaguars probably missed like the one opportunity they had to kind of run away with this division. But you know, you add Ridley, you've got the ghost of Traylon Burke still there as like a three. A Conquo is like a athletic tight end, and you've got two oh, yeah. running backs that can be probably interchangeable in terms of role. Yeah in Spears and Pollard and in a quarterback that can move a little bit. I'm, I'm at least in on paper. And they're going, they're going offensive line in the, at number seven. I mean, they're if just I, if I could, none of these guys are going to be expensive in the best ball streets right now. I haven't drafted yeah. a team, but I'm assuming what, none of what these do you guys think? are expensive, what do you right? think? What do you think the costs are between Pollard and Spears? Well, I imagine before free agency, Spears was getting drafted ahead of Pollard. Was he not? Way ahead. Yeah. Because the assumption yeah. was like, you know, Derrick Henry's gone. We're going to try to beat ADP if the Titans don't sign a guy. And he would have been potentially, you know, a fourth round, you know, draft pick. Now he's going to be kind of one of those, uh, you know, you know, zero RB darlings to kind of he's, dra- draft he's even, again. He's even cheaper he, than that. Pollard is running back really 21 cheap. and Spears is running back 30. But there's like a pretty big delta between the two of them i think i'd rather have pollard at 21 than spears at 30 i agree and my my uh but it's hard to know how much of that is just i mean you probably want all these guys in best ball more than you do in lineup setting formats because of the volatility that this offense traditional have yeah yes but i think a lot of the pieces here based on what i believe their initial cost would be i think i'm at least in on the surface of saying that there's a lot more probably upside than people are probably baking in all right, we'll get to uh, some prospects in a second. I do want. I, I was about to compliment the Titans, Dave. I I think more teams should do the two interchangeable guys than big guy, little guy. Because yes. if it's two, if it's two interchangeable guys, it, it's just obviously so much less of a tell to the defense. But if it's big guy, little guy, you know, a la Patriots, you, you're pretty much saying this is the offense we're running right now. We're trusting Callahan. Um, a, I do. I have want to ask to... you, Kitchen. Do you have like a crisis? You call me Kitchen. As... Kitchen. <laughs> I was saying Callahan Car- and Kitchen into Car- one. Karen Kitchen. The uh, <laughs> are you having a bit of a a crisis of faith about this iteration of the Titans? Because, like we said, no. with Rabel and Derrick Henry, that was a no. high T team, and that kind of aligned with your brand. You were always kind of wanting to push back against the piss boys and the beta movement and now the titans have gone full beta they're like man our quarterback sucks we got to get them all these weapons and all this stuff and we bring in these little lightweight running backs aren't you just a little nervous all right you're doing this like like it's an effeminate team and it's not it's just a it's 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 not (laughs) an effeminate (laughs) it's not it's just they were so excited to get rid of the hip drop tag i was gonna say the titans yay it's titans are probably the number one team trying to get rid of the hip drop (laughs) No, no, I think I, you know, I'm more of a chameleon where I can, you know, I can be the alpha if it's needed, or I can be the, you know, the analytical bro. <laughs> when have you ever been able to be the analytical bro? Well, you just gotta let me, you gotta let me prove myself. Um, 
is usually parroting other people's takes, but uh, yeah, I'm excited about this version of the Titans. I've said it like this is you you go and see what you got, and then if it doesn't work out, per- perfect. I think Vegas set their wins at five and a half, so if they get under that, then they're going to have a chance next year at another quarterback. So um, that's fun. All right, I was going to talk about just the coaches' meetings, but we can we can move yeah. past that unless yeah, yeah and it's just. <laughs> no, let's talk about let's talk about some the LSU pro day today. That's more relevant. You got uh Jalen neighbors just uh no close close close, close. yeah Jalen Daniels uh um, close again 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 <laughs> I I and outside Dave we're we're getting there Jaden Jaden Daniels you, you yeah. want a good you want a good Jaden Daniels stat yes Five months older than one Mr. Trey Lance. Five months older than Trey Lance, just languishing there on, on the Dallas Cowboys roster. I mean, had a really good season last year, though, Davis. Really good. <laughs> people are saying this more and more all the time. <laughs> people are saying the Heisman Trophy winner had a good yeah. season. People are saying it. Davis, you you are known as the guy who has a really strong pulse on LSU prospects, so I want to Famously. know... <laughs> I just I do want it. I do want the record to show round trip. I was right. Round trip on Odell Beckham Jr. Were you right? Yes. No, I don't think you can claim you were right on Odell. He had oh man. He had a he had some really good seasons. I don't think you can claim that. He had right. he had a really good six game stretch that people really remember. For sure. Do you know who took the L real bad in that 2014? Sammy Watkins over Mike Evans. Hardos. <laughs> yeah. That one did not break right for you them. See him? You see him? <laughs> you see him? <laughs> All right. Um, but this like these this quarterback situation and now the two receivers. You've got some mock drafts putting Drake May now outside the top 10. You got JJ going. Number these two, are, number these three. are these are men who just want attention. The yeah. I, I are believe, these are these are clickbait farms. Is that what you're saying, Davis? Yeah, I I believe there are a couple JJ McCarthy people who are actually doing it um, out of the out of true belief. Um, the fantasy points guy, I forget his name, and Thor Nystrom. I, I believe that they are legit non clickbait JJ McCarthy people. They've been on it. They've been consistent about it. But I think a lot of the JJ McCarthy people, uh, you know best quarterback in the class, top three quarterback in the class. I, I think those are, I think that's clickbait factories. And I think anything referring to may is not the second best quarterback is, is truthfully just so far from objective reality. I don't know. I mean, I, I think the latter part probably definitely isn't true. I mean, may uh, like on a lot of stuff on my end doesn't look as nearly as clean to me. He looks a lot like rich Jordan love, which is, I think is a compliment. I mean, he, he looks a lot like from a tool perspective, a lot like what Jordan love had, but I mean, he definitely doesn't have a clean profile. Uh, He's crackhead. So. Justin Herbert. That's, that's ex- all I can th- It's like Justin Herbert wired on Mountain Dew is, is what I think of when I, when I watch him, that, that is just what I got. I mean, the, the interesting thing about May and I think some of the quarterbacks in this class and I think the prospects in this class in general that I find interesting is that the draft class, this particular draft class, is like the first one where we had like this COVID extension. And we've seen a yep. lot of guys use this there to their advantage, especially this quarterback class. Jaden Daniels being one, obviously Bo Nix and Michael Penix completely using this to their advantage. And then, you know, definitely when we get to the other skill groups, you see a lot of wide receivers, like we wouldn't even probably know of, you know, that, that, that for fifth year, like breakout, like Xavier, like maybe doesn't even get a combine invite last year. If he has to, you know, graduate, no but, chance, but may that's where I think it helps may like may being the, the, on the younger end being, you know, you know, being 21 last year, only playing two years as a starter where it's like, you, we have like massive samples on Daniels, Bonix and Penix. Uh, these guys have started 50 to 60 college games where we only have this two year sample on May. Uh, and, you know, it, it's pretty, you know, it, it, there is some stuff that's kind of sketchy on it. That's not perfect, but there's still definitely a lot of upside. And I think that's where you can play into the upside stuff for May a little bit more than maybe some of the other guys, because the sample hasn't fully written itself like it has on the other guys that definitely use that fifth year to their advantage. 
I mean, what if Jaden Daniels was forced? What if Jaden Daniels got bad advice from his team and came out after that disaster junior year at ASU? Where where does he go? I mean, fifth round developmental pick, more or less. Like, it's hard to overstate. Compare what May or Caleb just did in their third year of playing high level college football to what Jaden mm-hmm. Daniels did his third year. Or, or even same with Knicks. I mean, go look at Knicks' third season. Like, and I think that's good. part of the pro McCarthy stuff too. You know, McCarthy being, yes. you know, not even he just turned twenty one in January. Yeah, you know, understanding that you still have so much more runway, and we've seen some NFL teams like we know the age is a part of the process to a degree, but we still haven't really seen like it fully. You know, yeah. like honed in a, you know, a universal stance. All right, rank your quarterbacks from a draft perspective, not a fantasy perspective. Your four quarterbacks. Reeves, I mean, that's the first. so that's the beauty of it is that like I don't have to because I'm not an organization, well, right? Like I'm not tying myself to these guys. I only care about the fantasy football. You do, aspect. you do have to because I just ask you. Yeah, why would show, we talk about fantasy value on this show? Let's put our my. I I want to know. Picture let's pretend like we're the Ringer NFL show right now. Whoever it's, takes it's, it's, a mock draft right now. Because that's the beauty of it is, you know, that we we can sit here and talk about these things that I don't have to put on a hat and have this firm J.J. McCarthy take. What I know about J.J. McCarthy is, is the the to thread the needle on him being like a top six fantasy quarterback is ultra thin. So I don't care. Yeah, but like, okay. you know, but like if I'm the Minnesota Vikings, the Denver Broncos or like a team that's entertaining, like trading up for him or taking him like you better hit. Well, the Vikings, the Vikings taking McCarthy is actually like double Yahtzee because it one, it gives him an opportunity to come in and immediately have guys to throw to and gets rid of us having to deal with a year of Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson and Aaron Jones with Zach Wilson or I mean, you know, honestly, I don't think I uh, maybe unpopular Brooks had in his NFL mock draft NFL.com. He had. Drake may going 11 to the Vikings. Well, okay. Well, Bucky Brooks is just, he's LARPing then because it's not going to happen. <laughs> may, 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 right. may will absolutely not go. Okay. Well, rank the third. quarterbacks then how you think they'll go off the board Davis. Well, I'll just give you my assessment of their skill. Caleb okay. is in a tier of his own all yeah. alone. Then there's a break and then it's may. And then it's Jaden. Then it's McCarthy. And I actually think Penix is probably a little bit closer here. Not no. Penix, or not Penix, Knicks, Knicks, Knicks. Knicks has no ceiling. Lar- like, <laughs> I, I, not, a I real think, show. I, <laughs> not a real show. Hashtag not a real show. I think I think if Knicks goes to like a reasonable organization with kind of a good Shanahan West Coast style offense quarterback, he's never gonna be I think like Phoenix I, his be ceiling is guy. like Tannehill, like Tan, like uh, like 2019 Tannehill. I, I think that's he not how you win an like argument that. with Kitchen, I mean, because that's yeah. music to his ears. Yeah. I mean, I see, I see Bo Nix as a being a very Alex Smith like quarterback. Great, yeah. that's even, that's even a that's better one. Be that's a, a better backup. one. He's gonna be good backup. But also um, win you games, not not lose you games type of like. Yes. Do you ever like punch up though? Do you are you able to punch up and win a Super Bowl? But that's the great thing is we don't have to worry about that. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna pretend like. The, you know, I'm not worried about anything right now, Reeves. You're just you're just vibing. He's just right vibing. Now. But He's I don't. But why? Vibe. Like, why do I need to come out here and on any show and declare have a declarative statement on JJ McCarthy's like NFL ceiling when, from a fantasy stance, for him to be like an actual like top six quarterback is so small. Like, yeah. that's all I care about, man. I care how much yeah. money JJ McCarthy is going to win me. Reeves, okay. Reeves, and I are built different. We are. Yeah. I just am built for like leveling off a Bo Nix take at the drop yeah. of a hat, and Reeves is yeah. like, "You're not gonna, you're not getting me on that shit." Well, <laughs> Kitchen, do you want to try well, your question and, again? And to be fair, that's yeah. I mean, Drake May, as as much as I think there's like an actual ceiling, if I was an NFL team and would want to access Drake to take a swing on a ceiling, yeah. But Drake May, from a fantasy stance, also doesn't profile to be like a guy like he projects to like as like an apex to get to like that Burrow Herbert like yes. level tier and like that's the most overvalued fantasy tier there is Ooh. because like those those guys have to flirt with throwing 40 passing touchdowns a season and we've seen in recent years when those guys don't it's like you you just have something you can arbitrage in fantasy like it's the yeah, most win- arbitrageable winning, <laughs> hey. winning nfl quarterback 
who doesn't run is like I mean it's true. I mean we're already seeing it with CJ Stroud, right? So Stroud right now is quarterback six in which in is ludicrous. Yeah, and, and I love CJ Stroud, but I'm not drafting CJ Stroud in fantasy football next year. He's gonna be way too or expensive. Tank Dell. Tank Dell is super expensive these days. Uh we'll get to that in a second though. But Jaden Daniels for as much Hold failure, on. I think he's probably has the highest bust rate of all these guys okay. is the most fantasy relevant. All right, Reeves, I, I yes. tried to ask you a question and you just flatly refused to answer no. it. So let me go on ask to Peter. uh Peter. Well, and Davis sidestepped it too. He gave his yeah. personal ranks. Ask me the oh, question. I'll, 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 do, I'll do my I'll do my No, draft, Davis. Okay? No, please. You had your nope. chance. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pete, give me who you think is gonna go off the board first. I think Caleb Williams is, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After Caleb, what would you go two through four? I think. I think the uh, Washington Commanders are going to be like, man. I heard someone comp Drake May to a to a cokehead Justin Herbert, and uh, <laughs> they're going to run to the podium to select him. That over Daniels, okay. And then yeah. number three, three. Uh, I heard he had an incredible. You got to ask your mother in law first. Incredible pro day, uh, and just pretty much the same age as Trey Lance, which augurs really well for his future development. <laughs> I think the Pats, GreatFit.com, Jaden yeah. Daniels. Easy select. Yeah. So where's JJ go then? JJ, the Cardinals, uh, they trade out from four. Yeah. And the Ooh, Minnesota man. Vikings come storming up, storming up. They say, we don't need you, Kirk. We got the next generation's Kirk and JJ McCarthy at four. And Bucky yeah. Irving takes the biggest L. Just the <laughs> biggest. Not Bucky, Bucky Irving. Bucky Brooks. <laughs> but, well, Bucky Irving's going to take a big L in the draft. Yeah. He's plummeting. <laughs> All okay. right, uh, uh, let's hold on, hold on, Davis. We got to move on. We got I thirteen just, minutes. Hold on. I, I want to ask Reeves a question that's actually about fantasy football. Well, I'm about to. Like Malik up. Neighbors just <laughs> had an incredible pro day. Are you keeping up with this at all, Reeves? Or you just don't? Have care? you heard about this? Have you seen this? Yeah, yeah, I have heard uh, this. I mean, he, okay. well, he, I mean, we were waiting on both these LSU guys because neither one of them even weighed yeah. in or got measured at the combine. At yeah. the combine. And it was a big deal for Jaden Daniels because there was – and he only was 210 pounds, but there was a lot of people – a lot of people were definitely worried about his actual size. Yeah, they uh, they said he's on that Uncrustable – he was on the Uncrustables diet, uh, just trying to get that weight up. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about Malik Neighbors, 4.35, a 42-inch vertical – a 10 foot and nine inch broad jump. The guy is an athlete. How close is he now for you? Does this move the needle at all on him versus MHJ? Yeah, I think they're real close anyways, uh, because of where neighbors wins. I just did a show with Davis and, and kind of brought up like so the, the the current like offense, offensive and defensive like counterplay right now in the NFL has, has changed the fantasy landscape and what kind of receivers you need for fantasy football and where guys win, right? Like when we were kitchen, when you and I were playing fantasy football growing up, it was yeah. all about that X receiver, right? Like you needed that, that, that prototypical, you know, Shanahan X receiver, a guy that dominated on the outside and won. Now we're seeing because of the way teams are playing defense and approaching, you know, mm -hmm. making NFL teams drive, they want you to beat them in the quick game. They want you to have long drives. They want you to complete shorter throws we're seeing more guys in the fantasy landscape that matter now guys like Amon Ross St. Brown you know even CD Lamb is a guy who started out as basically like a full fed slot receiver and now does like a mix and match of both but what I'm saying is like you have to be able to attack the wide receiver position from every wide receiver position now as the lead wide receiver and that wasn't the way it was you know kind of growing up and, you know, last year you look at the amount – we had 19 wide receivers average 15 or more PPR points per game. The slot rate for those wide receivers on average was 29%. Only five of those guys were below 20%. Six were over 30%. And Neighbors already did all that stuff in college, right? Like he already played in the slot a good amount. And he won vertically. He did all these things. He just doesn't really take any projection because he won at every level. Uh, smashed in the slot, smashed on throws 20 yards or further downfield, forced a bunch of missed tackles, did everything that you want to translate to where the current NFL game is being played. I think Marvin Harrison can do all those things. He just wasn't asked to do it in Ohio State, and he takes a little bit more projection. Uh, he didn't really play a lot in the slot. He just, he's not a, he wasn't a huge yak guy, although like the amount of yards he gained after the catch versus his total was kind of similar to neighbors. He just didn't force a lot of missed tackles. It was more like when he won vertically downfield. 
Um, but he did average over five yards per outrun in the slot too at Ohio State. He just didn't play a lot in the slot uh, at Ohio State. So he just takes a, a smidge more projection. I think the landing spots though do matter when you like lay out the shakeup for these guys. I mean, you, you look at Arizona, if they take one of these guys at four, like that's a pretty desirable spot, I think for target runway attachment to quarterback, like functional offense versus the guy that gets saddled to like play with Daniel Jones. Right. Like, so like there is some like maybe tiebreakers for landing spot goes uh, into play here, but I think neighbors definitely does everything you want to translate to the current NFL game and be a lead wide receiver right out of packaging. Pete. Yeah. What's the question catching? You can't just say my name. Reeves had oh, a lot crap. of different things there. So well, uh, what's the question? No, I, well, I'm sorry. You you had left the show uh, while I was asking it. But the question was um, Marvin Harrison Jr. versus Neighbors as yeah. far as Neighbors Pro Day. Neighbors just – yeah. you might have missed it, but he just went nuclear today at the Pro Day. I so. did miss it. I've watched the broad jump on loop. Uh, Denny <laughs> Carter said it looked like a glitch with how far he drafted – or uh, jump. He just like uh, just like pause in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm still uh, Harrison over neighbors, but uh, it, to Harrison me, is like, going so high. So is neighbors. They're, they're, I mean, neighbors is going. I mean, there's round. actually a pretty big delta. There, there's a, a eleven pick positional delta, thir- thirteen but pick positional. If you delta look at it them. based on a wide receiver tier. Like there's a yes. huge wide receiver tier drop off by the time you're getting to the Drake London. Um, people are still drafting DJ Moore super high, despite Keenan being there. Like it's a long tier down to the waddle neighbor stuff. So it's not that different to me. And it is like if you were if say Harrison wasn't in this class, we would be saying, Holy shit, neighbors is being drafted so high. Cause you still yeah. think back to Jamar Chase going fifth and sixth round. You know, Garrett Wilson went in the fucking twelfth round his year, and we'd be like, We're taking neighbors mm-hmm. here. So I don't e- I think it's like efficient. I don't even think it's bad, but I just uh I-, I think the market has it correct where it seems like the takes are now starting to fly that they should just be right next to each other as far as how the NFL evaluates them. And to me, that seems more of a byproduct of Harrison going full recluse. Like if Harrison was out here, you know, jumping at his pro day and doing all the stuff in his underwear, uh, people would be getting more excited about him, but he's done a disappearing act. JJ Chargers, not JJ Reeves. Chargers have pick number five. By the way, JJ's prospect guy is really good. Uh, go, go get that. Maybe we'll get JJ actually on the show. Um, Chargers pick at five. They don't have any wide receivers. I mean, they took one in the first Alex, round last year. Yeah, yeah. Alex Harrison yeah. erasure, buddy. That, that they did take one in the first round last year. He burned a lot of people. This guy included. But they also need offensive line, and you've got, um, you know, at the coaches' meeting, you had Harbaugh saying like how important offensive line was. If you're the and the charge, GM they hired comes from Baltimore, yeah. Like, and I, I honestly thought what he said was was good as far as like it's the one position class that doesn't it doesn't uh, their performance is not tied to any other position, right? Like, in fact, others' positions are tied to theirs. So, but do you do you think the Chargers trade back? Do you think they take offensive line, or do you think they they go for one of these two receivers we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, no team has ever been put in a spot that trade back more. I think than this, the way it lays out for the Chargers. The quite yeah. the thing is, everyone else knows that as right. well. So. Right. I mean, especially depending if there's a wild card at four, right? Like if someone trades with Arizona to four to take a quarterback, one of the quarterbacks, then like that means one of the wide receivers is there at five. And did the Chargers do that or do they trade out? Like it's it, it's just wide open. It's wide open for the Chargers right now to do what they kind of want to do. They also have a high second round pick, and this is a good wide receiver class in terms of depth. And they yeah. could easily just take a guy there too because they did take a first round well, a wide receiver last year too who's on the books for first round equity. So uh it, it's wide open for them so i don't really know what they're going to do i would say you know based on the history of these coaches of greg roman and jim harbaugh i would rather have them just pass on a wide receiver so we don't have to deal with this shit right like we, we, <laughs> we, we, we just don't have to like i don't want malik neighbors going to the chargers it'd be cool if he's attached to justin herbert but like 
And when Harbaugh and Roman were together in San Francisco from 2011 to 2014, the 49ers were 30th in the NFL in drop back rate, 31st in passing plays per game. You go back to all the stuff we've talked about with Jason McCarthy <laughs> at Michigan. Like they're the slowest, slowest paced college team. Like we know what they want to do and they're going to win but, games. The Chargers are going to win games. The alternative is if, if the Cardinals – uh, let's just assume one of the Cardinals uh, or the Cardinals take uh, a wide receiver there. Like the okay. alternative for neighbors is going to the giants. Most likely. I, I mean, know. don't you want neighbors as the wide receiver one with Herbert way more than dealing with Daniel Jones, but it's just, yeah. such a, it's just such, it's going to be such a heartbreak, man. This whole charter situation just really irks me because the, the Chargers are probably going to be a better real football team. I mean, look at everywhere Harbaugh's gone, man. Like he's turned it around. They've had how's their defense going to be. Are they going to be able to establish it on the ground if they're down in all these AFC West divisional games? I don't know. They'll find a way, man. I yeah. mean, to be honest, I mean, the, the division outside of the Chiefs That's isn't, true. Like, isn't like, there's no one you're scared Broncos. of, right? Like, it's, it's Larry, Moe, and Curly yeah. outside. Hey, of the hey, that's teams. the Broncos, Broncos who just Raiders. signed Josh Reynolds as about 15 yeah. minutes ago, guys. Oh! Respect on the Broncos. We got, and I Rick thought we had put there. a moratorium on trading draft picks for head coaches. Like, you know, and, and what are we doing? Like, this Broncos situation is what a nightmare, man. What an absolute nightmare. Yeah. And it's so and, bad. Uh, Saints also have a nightmare of a situation with the offensive line. We'll talk about that probably in two weeks, maybe when um, we get noted offensive line guru, legendary upside $2 million Pat Grain on the show. But, I mean, um, the Chargers immediately, the first thing in free agency, <laughs> the Chargers did was go sign Will Disley and Gus Edwards. Like, there's okay. no there's no secret on what is happening here. Yeah. They're smacking they're, us they're, They are not even, they are saying right. the quiet part out loud. A, li a little <laughs> Jordan Humphrey-esque signing uh, by the Chargers there. <laughs> Lol, Lol, mm. Jordan. Um, All right, uh, Reebs, I do want to talk about this Cleveland Browns offense, so totally. obviously. No one wants to talk about this except you, Kitchen. Reebs, the most expensive offense in the NFL. Reeves, you're in Cleveland there. Um, give us your thoughts on just the ceiling of this Browns offense this year. Boots on the I, I mean, the ceiling from a perception of what all these players can be as NFL players or the reality? The reality. No, no the ceiling. The ceiling. You don't have to worry about reality. We're dealing with the ceiling for this team. Because we've got – we don't know if Deshaun Watson's ever going to be good at football again. Like, it's kind of up in the air. Like, we'll, okay. we'll keep talking about it. We're on year three of maybe chasing that ghost, right? So let's leave it out there. He actually was okay for fantasy, if that makes you feel yeah. better. So that's, so yeah, that's that makes me feel, makes feel a lot better. The he Jerry Judy, who's like uh, the all-time Sound and Fury all-star. Like, you know, like, we're just – I mean, the, that contract extension – is Insane. very wild. Andrew Barry typically is not operated on that spectrum because we have to assume the Watson thing was more Haslam anyways, right? Because Watson removed the Browns from the, the – it was he had it down to the Saints and Falcons, and we have to assume that Haslam was like, do it ever it takes. And then, like, then Watson was like, oh, you guys are just going to give me the most ludicrous contract in NFL history. I will put you back and play it for that. Um, you know, you still have Amari, you have Njoku, but like uh, – well, I, as as far as like personnel goes, it's good. Like this is yeah. this is a good group, Agreed. right? And you, and they, they 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 draft production and they draft. That, that's what the Browns do. Like Andrew Barry's had a complete model. I'm more interested to see what happens with the running back situation, right? Because we have to assume Chubb isn't going to come back. Uh, you know, at 100 in season, like he'll be a guy that's like a ramp up guy. Uh, Jerome Ford was terrible. He was absolutely awful last year. And Kareem Hunt was, he couldn't even walk. Like, he couldn't even run more than three yards. So I'm more interested in seeing, like, the Browns are going to draft a running back mm -hmm. in this class. And I'm very yeah. curious to see, like, where that guy goes and how, and because he's going to get early season opportunity for sure. Yeah. I agree with you that Browns offense, their passing offense is, is got a high ceiling. Um, all right. Let's, what? Davis well, on Swain. paper, I mean, it's the same thing. It, well, it's the, I think it's the Titans situation, right? Paper. I think that's all paper, buddy. <laughs> yeah. 
It's, I mean, it's what it all is. It's it. This is a game played on paper. This is a uh, <laughs> fantasy game played. But on nobody's paper. drafting Jerry Judy, right? I'm seen, I know, I'm, or Deshaun I Watson. It, like you, you would be, yeah. you would be shocked to see some of the the names that Jerry Judy is going ahead of. And Deshaun Watson, I have to imagine, is still again a, a value at addition because he was in the full games he played was productive Whoa. for fantasy football. Whoa. You heard it here first, everyone. Um, Reeves on the Deshaun Watson sleeper train. Here, here he, you go, Reeves. I'm going to give you some names that Judy's going higher than. <laughs> tell me who would you rather have, Judy or Khalil Shakur? Judy. Judy or Curtis Samuel? Judy. Seven Judy or Rashid guys. Shahid? Yeah, I'd still rather have Judy than all these guys. So far. Okay, so you are Judy. Then you're, you're in line Wicks. with Market. Yeah, yeah. So I'd rather have him than all those guys. Okay. Um, all right. Because what is it? What are we talking? He's got to be in the wide receiver forties, right? Fifty-four, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's. I mean, dude, it, yeah. like, I'm you're doing pushback in the wide receiver fifties. Like, if he if he sucks, who cares? Before we, why before, those are very wise words. We're all going to lose anyway, so what does it matter? <laughs> before well, no, we like, sign so off, Jerry Judy was a bet oh. the last three years when we kept on the hopium train from Jerry Judy, Alabama. Like yeah. he cost you like wide receiver, like high twenties. Uh, he was a fourth round pick last year before he got hurt. Yeah. I, uh, I made the mistake of, of having a hard out when Reeves is going to be on the show. Should have known the actual analysis would push us back to a normal hour long show. Um, but we still got some stuff to talk about. So let's, let's just keep it going really quick. Let me, let me ask was this out. Really, really quick, Pete. Do you want to say anything to Davis about Justin Fields? I already took oh. the L on that last week, two weeks ago. I had totally I already forgotten took the L. that. Well, kind of. Unlike Davis, this, I own up to my L's. I don't try to find a. This was before the. This was before the whole Steelers thing. This was before the, the what the value for him was like. It sounds like you are owning it up, uh, owning up to it. So uh, yeah, I I thought you. there was no chance he wouldn't have a a starting gig uh, about Is, six weeks ago. I can't who think throws of a more player for them next year. Yeah, I can't think of a Russ player who like nine games. Whose dynasty value has tanked more than Fields from last year to this year? It's incredible. Well, I that's the Jaden. So Jaden Daniels, like number one comp for me, is Justin is Fields. Fields. Like it's gonna burn bright for fantasy, but like it might, like you might not get like a second. The things that Jaden Daniels isn't good at are all the same things that Justin Fields was bad at coming out of college. And remember, Justin Fields had two years of like massive passing stats because of the system yeah. he played in, the players he played alongside. But like we knew Fields had no quick game at Ohio State, and he took a shitload of sacks. And that's the all. That's the same thing with Jaden Daniels. Like it's the same issues. So I and think Jaden Daniels team. loves to get smoked. I mean, that guy just like seeks out contact. It's crazy how much he just like with like Lamar. It's like no one ever is able to square up on him. But Jaden Daniels would just get. Like, I could already hear you know for a stone's throw from my house the zappy chants as Jaden Daniels takes his <laughs> ninth sack of the game. God. <laughs> um. But he's gonna be yeah. great. Like Jaden Daniels is gonna he's gonna he's gonna rush for a bunch of yards and he's gonna yeah. get those fantasy points. And people are gonna okay. lose their minds. The sports callers, like Pete said, the sports callers are gonna lose their minds over him, probably. Pete's Last, mother in law that's... has a zappy jersey or will have one at some point for sure. <laughs> Last she thing. definitely wants Cokehead Drake May. <laughs> I'm so glad you said uh, Drake May at the at the end of that. So um, Christmas. <laughs> the crazy thing about Fields from like a dynasty stance is like everyone knew like the right like dude the writing was all over the wall and everyone blatantly ignored it. Yeah, head in the sand, yeah, baby. This, this so show is no in included. Um, <laughs> so Field Yates tweeted out about the the schedule, and this is going to be Week 17. Uh, Christmas Day got a game. The day after Christmas, got a game. And then I guess um, the 28th, two days later, got games. Then 29th games, 30th, a game. It's Kitchen has be... a hard out, but he can talk about no, the no, no, no. schedule right now. No, it's going to be insane. Um, <laughs> I want to get your thoughts, though, on one of the other pioneers 
in this industry, Sigmund Bloom, he said that we should go back to week 16 finals because of this schedule. I want to, I want to know your thoughts. Why? What's the um, he said, we shouldn't be creating more competition between family and loved ones and football. If you're a commissioner, put this up for an off season vote. If you're a player, ask your commission to put it up for a vote. So basically doesn't want people checking their lineups uh, during during the opening of, of Christmas gifts. Yeah, why does he, why does he focus see? on TikTok right now if he's worried about, you know, apps that are destroying families across yeah. the country? <laughs> Listen, man, there's a lot of things outside of NFL that are destroying families. <laughs> They're higher on the list. I thought he was going to say because something with, like, more teams resting. I thought it was going to be a football-based take for having yeah. it, but he just wants yeah. a little more time with his family. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is – and Sigmund Bloom, again, one of the OGs. Like, I, I think Davis – Sigmund like Bloom you... and Jason Robbins both really care about our families. That's, no. kind, of, that's kind of their driving. <laughs> I mean, from a content creation stance, it sucks. Yeah. From us, like, yeah. just because, yeah. you know, we can't well, do someone anything. someone think of the fantasy analysts. Yeah, <laughs> what do you want to think of us? Uh, you know, because I don't even know who's playing. Because I'm assuming these games are terrible, too, that are on these island games. Like, last year when they're like, we're adding a Black Friday game, and it's going to be quarterbacked by, you know, uh, Tim exactly. Boyle. Like, and I've got to do Tim, Tim Boyle, Boyle and Tua, takes. baby. Like, you know, it was going to be really good before Aaron Rodgers decided to just screw us all in prime time. Yeah, I don't know, but it's like, yeah, so, I assume there's some terrible games on those. But, uh, and, and to, to Pete's point, though, like when they added this, the, the the extra week of the NFL season two years ago, we haven't seen any manipulation like into the season. Still, nobody's resting guys two weeks out. So, like, in, in, unless that became like an issue, that would be the only argument I would say for like bumping your fantasy finals up is if we saw like week 17 be a complete problem for the NFL and like resting guys. We haven't seen that. All right. Um, we are a month away from the draft, so we still have lots of time to to fire off takes. Reeves, I know you don't you don't care. You all you care about is the fantasy implications, but not like you know what happens leading up to that. So tell us where they can find your fantasy takes. Give yourself yeah, start, start football analysis.com. I've already written up all of uh the rookies pre-draft. Uh, all these fantasy fallouts from the free agency and all those yeah. things like that. So you can definitely check out the actual takes over there. Awesome. Uh, final thoughts, Davis. Um, I want, I want Reeves's prediction for who the ship chasing ghost is going to be this year. You know, obviously we've had sky Ooh. Moore, we've had LaVisca Chenault. Um, there was, Matt uh, Corley. there was Dave, David Matt, Bell, Malachi Corley. uh, D David Bell was, was one of them. So who, what, what wide receiver or David running Bell back is going there. to be, there was a David Bell clip. Go producer check. I, I, Dave. I, right, Davis, I'm aware there's a David Bell clip, but the archetype you are describing is not David Bell. It's not it's David the LaVisca Bell. Sky Moore. Yes. So who is the heir to the, the ship chasing, uh, ghost throne this year? I've already he posited my guess. This is an interesting question because usually the ship chasing guy has been a guy that's been has like a lot of hyper production, but maybe is undervalued by the NFL draft class. And this draft class is the opposite. All the guys getting Ooh. hyped really have no production. Like that's what the interesting thing about this class is like everyone like in that like post top three steam and, and post like maybe uh let's do the, the the next year too so you have brian thomas xavier worthy and troy franklin as like a mini tier everyone after those guys are kind of there on just from like the scouting stance and that's not really how the ship chasing crew operates so i'm curious like i can't see them backing like ad mitchell or like keon coleman uh or elad mccocky doesn't strike me as a ship chasing guy no um, oh whoa can you imagine so Hunter to... Renfro having a clip on the show? It ain't <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Although Sky Moore was a pretty like boring dude, but so I'm trying to find like a guy that's there. Like, oh, man, is it like Devontae Walker? Like, is this like a, a ship chasing guy? Javon Too flashy. Baker? Too flashy. Javon Baker is he a ship chasing uh, guy? My guess, my guess is Jalen McMillan. Gretch, Gretch doesn't like him. My guess is he comes around. So I, I'm sticking with my Jalen McMillan guess. Okay. Yeah, uh, I would say maybe one of those guys, but that's the interesting thing about this class is everyone talks. I talked to Davis about this at, uh, on, on his podcast a couple weeks ago. A lot of people, I think, are just banking in the potential ceiling for this wide receiver class where a lot of these guys, I think, take 
a, a legitimate leap to kind of get there. Like the, the, the production profiles for this class are is are very lacking. Yeah, Ricky Pearsall. Be the I I like Ricky Pearsall. Yeah, same. All right. Uh, final thoughts, Pete. Um. Uh, I'm gonna look up who these players are that Rich just said, and I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get I'll get back to you guys on whether they're Roman be our Roman shit Wilson. Shit. Roman Wilson is another good guess. Someone in the chat said that. That's a good another good guess. Yeah. All right, uh, that will do it for today's show. Want to thank Rich Rebar, aka Lord Reeves, for joining us. I want to thank Pete for joining us too. Eventually, um, that was nice to have him on, and just for a uh, little bit. Yeah, you know, just to uh, to keep up the the persona so uh appreciate y'all and regardless of what davis says this is a real show this is 100 a real show so please like subscribe we're on the road to 10k we'll see you <laughs> see you in two weeks here on the swole cast i'm real show would be Peace. weekly